For our first panel, what we're going to do is we're going to take a tour around the world and hear perspectives from patients like you and their efforts to try to bring their lived experiences and their insights into advocacy and in terms of taking their experiences and impacting policy and considerations in their own countries. And so let's go ahead and take a quick run around the world. Speaking of my personal experiences living with a non-communicable disease, it has been over 20 years today since I was diagnosed with rheumatic heart disease. Since that period, I've been under medication, enduring a life-threatening condition, and two open heart surgeries for mitral valve replacements. They all began when I was a little child, uh, around seven years old. I and I used to. Uh, endure pharyngitis uh, episodes. We didn't uh, realize that the severity of untreated sore throats could result to rheumatic fever or rheumatic heart disease. Uh, so I was uh, later diagnosed with rheumatic heart disease when I was 11 years old. Uh, I who didn't even know where um, heart belongs in our body had to uh, go through the first open heart surgery and um, it was a real hard time for me and my family. Uh, it had impact, uh, impacted us uh, physically, mentally and emotionally. And additionally, um, we lacked the funds uh, to do the surgery because saving money for healthcare and uh, treatments were not that much common practice in our uh, area or in the context of Nepal so um, it was really a challenge for us and then um, I'm thankful to my parents that they did whatever it took uh, for them to do because they even took loan from the neighbors to manage the cost for my treatment and for my uh, second uh, surgery also uh, it it was a cha different challenge. I had to even lose my job. So, yeah, the only uh, good thing that happened uh, at the time was along with my good health, uh, I increased my health literacy. My good and bad experiences living with this condition as a child and as a young female slowly started to pave the way for my NCD advocacy journey, speaking for um, fellow patients and families within my country and beyond. Um, there were some good experiences which motivated me to NCD advocacy and uh, this was the support that I received from my close ones, healthcare providers and the government policies for people living with NCDs. For example, I received a free valve for my uh, second heart surgery and also received um, uh, cash support of about $1,000 uh, from the policy that they have but these good experiences were outweighed by the bad experiences that I and my family together um, had uh, uh, so for example it was the financial burden or the risk of comorbidities like kidney disease anxiety and depression or to say the post-traumatic stresses the fear of treatment and as well as uh, inadequate knowledge uh, of our own problem which led us uh, to dilemma in decision making. So all this uh, actually um, motivated me to advocate uh, uh, for myself and, my and for others. So I began uh, this journey. The first step I took was that I taught myself that my condition should not define my life and my goals. I joined the fellowship program uh, and I increased uh, my networking with uh, patient-led organization with the support of my uh, surgeon. Uh, in every platform, I emphasized how non-communicable diseases affect children, adolescent uh, or young people and elderly, uh, the poor and the rich uh, 
in variety of ways and in places particularly in the limited resource settings uh, because healthcare interventions and uh, health outcomes should not determined should or should not be determined by the zip codes uh, we decide in uh, so i also argued uh, on the equitable distribution of resources uh, and uh, the meaningful inclusion of people living at, with ncds at every decision making tables was another crucial point that i made uh, i spoke out in favor of it in front of um, government representatives and medical specialists at the World uh, Heart Summit, which was recently held in Geneva, uh, immediately before the 75th World Health Assembly. And uh, in the normal uh, or informal uh, consultation meeting with uh, meeting that was organized by the WHO CRO in meaningful involvement of people living with NCDs and mental health conditions, which I guess uh, many of you also have participated uh, there. And the day before yesterday only, I shared uh, this uh, things at the National Conference of the Nepalese Society of Community Medicines in Nepal. One of the things that I always uh, love to highlight in my lived experience of sharing is that one's experiences could always be a guide to another since uh, we not only share common signs and symptoms of the disease, we also share common values and hopes. Although we present, including our care partners, live around the world in different locations. Um, I believe this bond has uh, the synergy. So I wholeheartedly believe that a global consortium led by patients working together across the world has the power to bring change. Uh, like the pebble thrown in the silent pond brings the waves as the ripple effects. Um, there is a gap in policies and interventions uh, uh, related to innovations. Um, although health uh, is in the common interest of every stakeholders we name and the voices of people living with non-communicable disease can contribute to bridging the gap. Uh, our experiences could be the resources uh, we are lacking. Uh, I would also call, like to call uh, on the governments uh, to listen to our voices and uh, petitions and uh, I would like to applaud what uh, the AAKP and other uh, patient-led uh, organizations and groups uh, have been doing uh, to let our experiences uh, be heard, uh, be read or remembered and applied uh, by the governments and industries in terms of uh, NCT advocacy and innovations. So thank you very much for this. I see that the government uh, has achieved significant strides in the field of cardiovascular disease and other in NCDs, uh, including uh, kidney disease. And there are many potential ways to continue this with uh, treatment innovations. For example, many of the patients who require monthly blood tests to determine uh, their PTINR score may have to travel for one or more days uh, to the hospital in the city or wait for the camps to open up in the area. Um, this results in the poor health outcomes, uh, more out-of-pocket expenses and opportunity costs uh, and additional trauma related to this. Um, therefore, I think um, it would be great, uh, it would uh, greatly improve people's quality of life in terms of their health if uh, test kits were made available at every uh, health centers um, so that people uh, could get their PTINR results at the point of care. Uh, similarly, I think it would uh, help the people uh, living with uh, rheumatic heart disease in Nepal 
or other nations if we could make uh, the long acting ready to use penicillins vial available uh, i say this because um, ready to use vials are available in many developed countries but in nepal it is uh, available only in powdered form uh, uh, it uh, while administrating that uh, injection first it jumps when combining the powder with the distilled water and transferring it to the injection uh, to the syringe and second it is not uh, produced on a large scale uh, because it is less profitable to the uh, manufacturer uh, which causes uh, it to occasionally become scarce in the market uh, third it is too painful uh, to inject and uh, it can be life threatening in some cases um, i used to take the penicillin injection intramuscularly for about 10 years and these challenges affected uh, me and my family so later i switched um, to an oral uh, form of medic medication uh, which is um, comparatively less efficient than the injection and at sometimes I forget to take it uh, and it makes me uh, more vulnerable uh, because it uh, had chance to uh, weak, um, weaken my heart valve function. Uh, I think uh, this type of concerns are also uh, faced by the kidney patient society. From the moment when I noticed or witnessed uh, that life with rheumatic heart disease, kidney disease and other entities are uh, preventable and are complicated by the existing health inequities, I learned that uh, our uh, every single and simple experiences are not valueless. They are really, really important. It has a greater role to live a purpose-driven life. We have to utilize it and find opportunities to apply it, especially when people living with NCDs are perceived only as uh, uh, vulnerable groups or service seekers uh, and not also as the partners in the health system. Um, so as a part of my advocacy in Nepal, I have started a project called uh, Connecting Hearts to End Heartbreak. In short form, it is uh, Chair Hearts. Uh, uh, with the technical and financial support from the NCDI Poverty Network and Partners in Health. Um, with this, I am creating a group of people living with rheumatic heart disease and congenital heart disease uh, so that uh, we can be a group uh, to encourage and help each other and um, for that I have approached uh, too many health uh, uh, centers, hospitals, administrations, uh, doctors uh, and civil societies for uh, possible supports and collaborations. I have recently uh, started communicating with the WHO Nepal uh, for developing uh, strategies to strengthen uh, the alliances of uh, organizations that work in NCD uh, and initiate policy advocacy research uh, uh, as well as uh, enhance patients' uh, health literacy. Uh, at the global um, advocacy part uh, with the NCDI Poverty Network, um, Global Arch, uh, which is a global alliance for um, rheumatic and congenital hearts, um, we are advocating for investment in health uh, or especially investment in NCDs uh, also for the uh, meaningful uh, meaningful involvement of people living with NCDs. Um, we are also involved in creating ideas uh, for patients active involvement in an in, um, integrated severe NCD interventions uh, like uh, the pain plus uh, which is the package of essential non-communicable disease interventions plus uh, this is the uh, integrated uh, uh, service delivery uh, intervention uh, for to improve the quality of uh, health of children and young adults uh, um, implemented in many uh, developing countries in the African and Asian region.
I'd like to thank my fellow patients from around the globe, giving their perspectives and their insights and talking about their shared experiences. One of the universal themes that you'll hear is diseases are tough to manage, but the insights that you gain and how you can apply those in the policy process to make an impact and to encourage other people to make a difference and to increase choice and options for patients is a universal theme. And that's something that the American Association of Kidney Patients, we incorporate that with our allies and we push it forward. And I really wanna appreciate the folks that spoke today because it takes courage to stand up and have your voice counted. Thank you.